what we are talking of now in this edition of the news is a very special segment. Remember, this is a story that a lot of us have seen, a lot of us have been reading and Googling about, but I think these two gentlemen that we see on our screens will actually tell us that what does the Ever Given do today at the Swiss Canal? What are the efforts being taken to actually ensure that there is some bit of movement? How will it affect the supplies? And gentlemen, before we deep dive into that entire issue, this is just a primer about what we are talking about. A giant container ship has remained stuck sideways in Egypt's Swiss Canal as the authorities are racing to free the vessel and reopen traffic in a crucial east-west watergate for global shipping. And this is all that we know about the story so far. And then we'll take this discussion ahead. The families of the 25-member all-Indian crew on board Ever Given cargo ship that has been stuck in Egypt's Suez Canal since March 23rd continue to pray for their safety. The company that manages the ship Ever Given said that two pilots from Egypt's Canal Authority were on board the vessel to guide it when the grounding incident happened around 7.45 a.m. on Tuesday. The company added that all Indians on board the container are safe. 3月現地時間であります the Suez Canal that handles 12% of global seaborne trade with the blockade disrupting over 9 billion a day of goods. More than 150 vessels are now backed up with hundreds more headed to the vital waterway and losses to global shipping are mounting. What makes Suez Canal a crucial waterway is the passage it provides from Asia to Europe, eliminating the need to circumnavigate Africa. Suez Canal is uh potentially the most important canal uh, around the world has been for more than 100 years and it is in it, in reality is extremely simple either you go through the Suez Canal or you go the long way all the way south around Africa and that's going to give you a detour of at least 5000 kilometers by doing so even with the aid of high tides authorities have been unable to push the panama flagged container vessel aside and they are looking for new ideas to free it with more than a billion tons of goods passing the canal in 20,000 ships, roughly 50 ships a day, the opening of the Suez Canal has become more crucial. As the ship company continues to resolve the situation, India remains concerned about the safety of the All Indian crew. Bureau Report, Republic TV. All right, so what is happening right now? What are the efforts underway? Let me now introduce uh, these two gentlemen now who've been smiling and, uh, you know, patiently waiting. Peter Sand is a chief shipping analyst at BIMCO. That's a Baltic and International Maritime Council with us. He's on the broadcast from Denmark this evening. And Dr. Saul Marsiglau is a history professor at the Campbell University and a maritime historian. Uh, I want to take it to you first, Peter. Now, what really are they trying to do right now to free the ever given? What's happening? the uh, all Indian crew are safe and secondly obviously uh, plenty of trucks are deployed as well as plenty of dredges so what they're trying now in uh, the canal is uh, of course to remove the sand underneath her keel in order to refloat her but uh, but obviously there is a lot of sand uh, beneath her keel this is a 400 meter long ship uh, cu cutting across uh, the canal so this is a huge task uh, it is likely to, uh, to 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 mean many days of work before transit can be resumed you know I, I think that's a good point that you do make but a lot of effort obviously is going into this now dr sal why don't you elaborate for viewers, you know, watching this and wanting to understand that why has this become such a big issue? And also wanting to know that how much of supplies possibly could get affected by this ever given right now then? Well, the ever given is across the most narrow part of the canal. The canal is only about, 100, about 120 meters wide where she's at right now. So she's astride the whole canal. She's ashore in Asia and implanted on Africa. So it makes it very difficult to go ahead and remove all, all this element to her. And of course, 12% of the world's economy goes through that, that waterway.
And what will happen? You know, what will happen, Peter, over the next few days to the next few weeks, gentlemen? This is also a concern that people now are thinking about that how long? I mean, is this just a matter of a few days, few weeks or possibly longer, Peter? It's the multi-billion dollar question, obviously, as, uh, as the, the traffic uh, remains uh, closed for, or uh, well, the canal remains closed for business. Uh, ships have been piling up uh, through the past couple of days, and we have uh, plus 250 vessels already lined up for, uh, for transit once the canal reopens. But what happens now? Well, uh, the, uh, already the second stage contingency plans of all the uh, liner companies and shipping companies and logistics companies involved in this uh, are being executed at the moment. And that means that uh, ships from, uh, from far away are getting diverted around the Cape of Good Hope. We have seen container ships uh, carrying predominantly MCs back to, uh, to Far East already being diverted uh, away from a, a Suez transit around the Cape of Good Hope adding approximately a week uh, to, uh, to the transit and, and, and up to half a million dollars of extra fuel costs. But if the alternative is to, uh, to just uh, be next in line, and that line in front of you is, is extremely long, I mean, um, time is essential here, not only for those, uh, those stretches and, and those salvage workers, uh, but also for, uh, for, for many of those companies, uh, in particular in Northern Europe, that await time-sensitive cargoes uh, in order to make sure that their assembly lines can, can run like clockwork. Because time-sensitive cargoes, of course, uh, are first in line to, uh, to, to get uh, redirected uh, as we speak. And it is happening right now. We know that. Okay, and you know, Dr. Sal, there's this question that one of our viewers is sending to us. He's watching this broadcast and he wants to know why did this situation even occur in the first place? He says, is the canal actually made for ships as big as ever given or, you know, what, what really happened? What got it stuck there? Well, the canal was actually widened in 2015. And one of the things that we're seeing is the canal had shut down for eight years in 1968. And one of the things that the maritime mm. industry did was start building these larger vessels to accommodate that. So we started seeing the birth of the mega tankers, the super tankers, the large uh, passenger vessels, and now these, the ultra large container vessels. And when the Suez Canal reopened and over the years, one of the things Egypt has done is expand the canal to accommodate vessels of this size. The Ever Given is one of the largest container vessels in the world at 400 meters. Uh, it's, it's absolutely just mind-boggling the size with a crew of 24 on board. The issue is uh, a little bit of controversy because the ship's crew and, and the owner is saying that she, she uh, was hit by the wind and was knocked off course. Uh, other vessels her size have gone through the canal without this happening. Uh, there's debates about uh, there was initial report by the agent and the Suez Canal Authority that the vessel lost power. Uh, but right now, one of the most important things is a vessel this size. We've seen vessels get stuck in the Suez Canal, but we have not seen a vessel this size get stuck. And one of the most dangerous things in this salvage operation is the fact that the bow and stern are hung up on the ground and the middle of the vessel is afloat. You have to be very careful when we're doing the dredging right now that the vessel doesn't shift and can conceivably roll over or worse, crack in half. So it, the salvage operation is a very complex operation that's undergoing. You know, uh, Peter, would you want to push that point a little further for our viewers? Dr. Sal says that this is a challenging operation. The entire operation about salvaging the Ever Given is going to be huge, full of challenges. Like how? And what are the risks and what? Well, I think Dr. Sal points to, to many of the, of the, uh, the challenges that the salvage uh, teams are facing at the moment. But what we know also is that uh, the authorities have cleared uh, the canal in, uh, in the northern direction as well as in the southern direction. And what they will do now is uh, that uh, they will remove as much sand beneath the keel as possible and make use of the power of the trucks to basically drag her out in the direction of where she came, uh, because that is, uh, well, it is a difficult task for 220,000 tons to get uh, dragged out of there, but it is the way to do it. Obviously, uh, in, in the very last resort, uh, we may see containers being taken off the ship, basically to, to ease the burden on, uh, on the Ever Given herself. Uh, but I think that will be, as I said, the last resort they will uh, adhere to, 
uh, in, in the case everything else uh, fails to refloat her. Until then, I'm sure we will see a slowing down in terms of building lines waiting at southern Anchorage and northern Anchorage as uh, more ships find their way around. Obviously, this is critical, uh, it's particularly for those that make use of the shortcut uh, out of Black Sea, for instance, uh, or out of uh, the Persian Gulf because that is really where the shortcut uh, is, uh, is perfectly suited. It is uh, something different if you go, so go uh, if the cargo leaves uh, the U.S. Uh, Gulf of Mexico or, uh, or cargo heads all the way uh, south from, uh, from Australia into uh, to Europe or North America. So, uh, so it's very diverse, the impact, uh, but we surely know it's a massive impact, and it cuts, cuts across sectors, and it cuts into land or, as well as the sea. And what a fascinating story this is going to be. And uh, Peter and Dr. Sal, for the moment, only for war of time, thank you to both of you gentlemen for making us understand here that what really are the challenges, what is the problem. And, you know, this is the canal. The ship, the ever given for viewers is stuck like this. Right now, efforts are being made to salvage that ever given from there. For the moment, thank you to both of you. And with this, uh, we are also wrapping things in this edition of the news.